tonight on Kitchen Nightmares, Gordon rides into Tuckahoe, New York, and finds a handyman <gasps> with a dream that's become a nightmare. It's the last fucking table! But that doesn't mean the owner is lacking confidence. I don't believe there's a better operator or restaurateur than me. Read the fucking ticket! The rather odd menu has turned customers on. I could come out of a baby's diaper. Right, that sits on top. The chef has lost his way. Do I still have passion for food? Please help me! No. And if Gordon can't get through to this control freak owner... You're a fake. Well, you're a fake. This restaurant will have no choice but to close. For every shit plate of food we send, we're narrowing the chances of this place becoming successful. Can Gordon restore order to the Old Stone Mill? I'm not too sure if you're actually hungry for the change. You know that. Or have they grown accustomed to chaos? Are we scared about being busy? Yes. What? Tonight on Kitchen Nightmares. Tuckahoe, New York, a wealthy old commuter town 45 minutes north of Manhattan and home to the Old Stone Mill restaurant and bar. But now the Old Stone Mill is in danger of grinding to a halt for good. Okay, six years ago I, I took this place and I began my quest to convert this old mill into a restaurant. And here we are, open four years now. Done. We took a risk. There's no investors here. You know, we built it out. I did everything in here myself. Is this the right spot? All the woodwork, the carpentry, the plumbing. The only thing I really didn't get involved in was the electrical work. <laughs> OK. I don't believe there's a better operator or restaurateur than me. But no one's coming in or trying to come in. I'm embarrassed that I can't go out with the sides that I need for a table. My boss, Dean, he's a pain in the ass. He has come in and screamed at me. Come on, man, read the fucking tickets. It's horrible. It's absolutely horrible. What the fuck? Do I still have passion for food? No. And it shows. There were days I just couldn't think of eating the food. I eat my food, and my family eats my food. And I think it's good. We don't have a very young crowd. There is a assisted living facility right behind us. And we do have a lot of the blue heads come in. <laughs> that's that's the that's the customer base. Hopefully the entrees will come soon. Service, please. We do have a problem with the service because it is very hard to get people to work here. Can I get someone here to clean the sink? I'm missing a dish here. I'm missing a knife. A little piece of glass on the table. Never hurt anyone, right? I have a reoccurring nightmare that I've had from day one. What happens if I open up, staffed up, food ready, and? No one decides to come here. Well, it happened this year. I don't know. I don't have answers for that. I wish I did. When you're making no money, it's very hard to convince you that tomorrow is going to be a better day when you have bills to pay. It's not that nice when it's slow. Well, a slow night is a lot of sad faces. You tell me what to do. Well, he's Tell me right. what to do. Let everybody earn money and let Dean take it in the ass, as always. Why aren't more people coming here? I don't know. I really, really don't know. Being behind on my mortgage and the thought of them foreclosing on my house, I just couldn't, I couldn't take it. I can't take it. Hi, honey. Hi, babe. I need money for dry cleaning. Money? What about these people? Think they need money? <laughs> I think my wife might know. These last couple of months have been the worst ever for me. I'm going to be up here and see who the lucky people are that are going to get paid today. This restaurant isn't just a restaurant. It's our life, it's our future, it's our children's future. and himself could be here any minute. I almost drove by this place. What a beautiful building. What scares me is why no one's eating here. I'm about to find out. What the? 
Gordon. How are you? I'm Dean Lorazzo. Nice to see you. Well. Very nice to see you. Good to see you, too. Thanks for coming by. No matter what you say, the guy's a winner. His Michelin stars are like World Series rings. He's got them. Tom? Hi. Tom, how are you? What is that? This is the, the barman, yes? This is the chief cook and bottle washer here. This OK, guy. fantastic. You know, I know his credentials. I know how good he is. I'm starving. Oh, OK. I do believe Gordon could help the restaurant, but how much so, I don't know. Jeannie, this is Gordon Ramsay. When he approached me and put out his hand, said hello to me, well, first of all, I like blonde men, so he was adorable. Jean, nice to see you. I felt a very warm feeling. So glamorous. Gordon will be a plus in my life. This is our menu. It just has a little history on one side and our menu on the other. Thank you. You got it. Hmm. How you doing? So I'd like to know the crab cakes are homemade with fresh crab meat. Fresh crab. Lovely. I'll start off with crab cake. I'd like to see a um, shrimp, please. I'll have the chopped salad, please. Thank you. And then for um, main course, risotto. And then I'll go for the tilapia on papillot. Michael, you do things your way. I am very nervous. He's going to come in here, I'm going to cook for him, and he's going to say, eh. Are you um, chewing gum? Yes. You are. Is that normal? I suppose. Ready? Apart from being slow, the waiters think it's normal to chew gum. Hey? Come on, let's go. Send it out. You know, if somebody of his caliber come in, I don't know what he's going to do. I don't know what he's going to say. Cool. Thank you. Mm. It tastes really strange. I can't put my finger on it. Something really weird in there. It's like a sour mayonnaise flavor. I'm hoping that he likes one of the dishes that he ordered, two of the dishes, maybe all of the dishes. Not to hell. Cheese. Wrapped in filo paste, deep fat fried. I've eaten some prawns in my life, but fuck me, that's a first. Not to hell. Make it out, Gordon. Is this a popular dish on the menu? Yes. Wow. So far, I don't think he's liked the food. What is that? Chop salad. Oh, chop salad. So, excuse me. Look at that. What's that squashed into? Looks like it's been squashed into an ice cream cone. OK, that's it there. <laughs> right, that sits on top. Was the chef a mechanic? No. No. Aside from its appearance, it, people actually uh, enjoy it. You know, this is my house. He was in my house, and he was embarrassing me. OK. Please don't make me eat any more of this shit. Take this out while this is still puffy, please. Lovely. Thank you. Looks like someone's had a shit in the bag and stuck it in the oven. Oh, dear. Disappointment was written all over his face. He doesn't like any of the food so far. It's gross. Pretty gross. Basically told me everything we're serving is shit. What did you expect him to say? Everything was great? Every single dish he had sucked? You know, I, I can't help but get defensive. Risotto. The chef likes all these little mashed lamb lettuce. Sadly, it's hot and disgusting. The rice just purees in your mouth. It, like, sort of sticks to the roof of your mouth. Mm. Well, a Russian can't even cook a simple mushroom risotto. It's a big worry. Gordon didn't like the food. Didn't seem to like anything, so nobody's feeling too good right now. If you're going to be a restaurateur, at least know what your food tastes like. I don't think this guy's got a fucking clue what his food tastes like. OK. Take a seat. Sure. Sit down. Right, um, that was interesting. Um, interesting, but bitterly disappointing. Is that canned crab? That's not fresh crab meat, is it? It's canned crab. When I asked very politely, is the crab meat fresh, the waiter told me, yes, of course it is. The waiter told you that was fresh crab meat? Yeah, that's why I ordered it. First one arrived stone cold. I'm sorry. Let's have a little taste there and, and eat that for me. Look at it, it looked like it'd come out of a baby's diaper. Huh? No one's going to come back for that. That as a chopped salad. I mean, it's hideous. Let's have a taste of that. My eight-year-old daughter could cook better than that. 
Probably from anyone else, I would have threw the table over and threw them out. Honestly, your food's crap. He's a little harsh, and he got to be a little abusive on the food. Oh, shit. What the hell did we get into? If you think that you're going to continue running this business, serving that shit, you may as well turn this place into a museum. No one's going to come back for this. I was pissed, real pissed. I wanted to take the plate and smash it on top of the chef's head. Coming up, Gordon bursts Dean's bubble. I'm not too sure if you're actually hungry for the change. And this owner boils over. What I get paid to do to stand here next to people and give them a good fucking experience. And later, Michael snaps. It's been an hour and I got nothing. This is the copy. You got to have the other half. This goes from the salad printer. That's coming up on Kitchen Nightmares. In order to fully understand all the issues of the Old Stone Mill, it's time to get tight-lipped Dean to open up. Um, these questions may not be comfortable, Dean, but unless I understand the full scenario, then I can't get this place back online. One thing I'd like to know is the financial situation. Are you aware of the current financial situation, Barbara? Um, he kind of keeps me in the dark a little bit. So. I don't want her to worry. No reason for her to share these anxiety and nerves that I have. Totally unnecessary. I try not to bring it up. It's always easier just to kind of not think about what's going on here. And that's probably one of the reasons why I don't come down very often to the restaurant, because what you don't know can't hurt you. I just choose not to deal with it right now. I'll let him deal with it. Yeah, but if the house gets taken away and you lose that, then you've got every reason to be worried. I mean, the bottom line is you're losing money. Correct. Every week. Every week? Yes. If we had to close yeah. tonight, just switch everything off. Yeah. What would we owe? Half a million. Half a million? Yeah. It wouldn't be good for our marriage, I don't think, if he would risk, you know, everything that we possibly had in the world. You got money tied up in the home, oh, mortgage-wise? Oh, sure. A mortgage, a second mortgage, and a home equity line. God, so that's backed up big time. Yeah. How do you manage in terms of getting through month to month in terms of mortgage payments, suppliers, salaries, your salary? What do you want me to say? It's, it's, it's you know, I'm in hell right now. Please don't get upset. I know, I won't. No, no, I won't. no, but I, no I don't, it's, yeah, just... it's crucial for me to understand exactly where we are. No, I know. I've got to be really frank and honest. That's why you're here. Nothing is more telling to Gordon than observing a full dinner service. Fortunately, it's Saturday night, the one night the restaurant is busy. Hi, how are you? All right. Well, enjoy you your dinner. Much. Hi, folks, how are you? I know you'll be happy with that, and can't go wrong. Tonight, I am on the edge, because now the fear of failure is setting in. The cashew chicken. Prime rib, medium rare. Mushrooms. As orders begin to arrive in the kitchen, Fried calamari, chopped salad, crab cakes, one prime rib, medium rare, two cashew chicken. Chef Michael is clearly frustrated. Have you see anybody run a line by themselves? Uh, not like this before, no. Huh? You know, it's just me, and you have to get it done, you get it done. It's not easy when you're by yourself. It really isn't. No, I'm not saying it is easy. No. Michael works more than is expected of a normal chef. He does above and beyond. As Chef Michael continues to fight the battles alone in the kitchen, Nice to meet you, Lisa. Owner Dean and manager Tom are in their own world in the front of the house. Just another day in paradise, huh? Hi, how are you? Perfect. I think I might have a beer with you. Oh, really? Cheers. Cheers. Say the truth. There is no place like this in Pennsylvania. There's no place uh -huh. like home. As the manager here, I do whatever it takes to keep the place running as smoothly as possible. And where's your strengths? Your strengths in what? Hopefully the entrees will come right. soon. They should be. An hour into dinner service, and the overly embellished dishes finally emerge from the kitchen. Mike tries to presentate the food 
real nice. What's this crack here with the calamari in the martini glass? Okay, we're just trying different presentation because the, the dishes we have suck. Suck? I can't believe you'd be so fucking polite. Holy mackerel. I don't even know what to tell you. And neither Gordon or the customers are impressed. I think my is too much garlic. OK. Is it cold? Is there enough sauce on these cashew chickens? Yes, there is. I'll put more. When it just becomes a job, not that you don't care, not that you don't put any effort, but it's just the same shit every day. By the way, the, 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 the paper's edible. I've never had my dinner served to me in a brown paper bag. I don't know why the fries are looking remarkably shitty tonight. In your business right now, yeah. I wish that was the only problem, a fucking french fry. Is it cold? Send it back. Send it back, yeah. Excuse me. Are they OK? Yeah. Just OK? Just OK. Just OK. With food now being sent back to the kitchen, already behind, Michael is now totally overwhelmed. I need a risotto and a tilapia, and that's done. And Dean is not helping the problems, but adding to them. I got backed up because it was too much at once. Oh, my god. Overcooked. Come on, come on. Get this to, get this to 28 over right now. Mikey, the risotto. It's overcooked. God damn it. You got me very frustrated. Let the customer wait. If he waits 20 minutes and he's happy, or he waits 20 minutes and gets crap, what's worse? Let him wait 20 minutes and be happy. Give me that dish, man. Please send it out right now. Michael. Yes, sir. Are you happy with that risotto? Not really, chef, no. Michael, if you're not happy with it, why'd you serve it, my man? Chef to chef now. What? Forget, forget, forget Dean. Where's, where's the tilapia? That's huh? what I want right in now. In the oven. Yeah. Dean, he's the owner. Ultimately, it's his decision. Hey. Yeah. Right now, I just want to get people their food. You What's want the matter with this? It's very salty. Mushroom risotto. Let me try some. Your risotto taste is disgusting. Yeah, you should send it back. Does it make you feel better if we rush this to the table? No. I'm trying to ask the chef about some form of standard, and you're just like, get the fucking shit out of because here. Because the lady asked me three times for her yes. food. I'm amazed. You know that more than anything. I don't know. I don't know what you, I don't know what you want me to say to you. Your restaurant is on the ass. That's what I'm. But it's done. About. It's done, Gordon. It's done. I love the facade you put across it. it you know it's that. It's not a facade. Yes, it is. No, it's not. Yeah. Actually, we were just going to ask you about the risotto. Um, I think it's really salty. I don't really like the taste of it at all. Sorry, ma'am. It's okay. Thank you. The risotto is really What did they say? It was a little salty. It's not salty. They sent back your favorite dish, the risotto. Dean's willingness to send out substandard risotto typifies what's wrong with the Old Stone Mill. In addition, a great deal of Dean's energy has gone into beautifying the restaurant. But the menu has been neglected. I don't think you understand the real reason why I'm here. The inconsistency of the food is obvious. The food needs some serious attention, and yet no one seems to address it. I asked Michael. Are you happy with the risotto? He said, no. And you said, no, I've got to serve it. I've got to serve it. They'll be waiting 50 minutes. Have you any idea how much damage you're causing? What do you want? What, what do you well, it's want? It's not about what I want. It's just what I'm, I'm miffed. I'm not too sure if you're actually hungry for the change. You know that? It's one thing to believe in a dream, but it's another thing to actually be in a dream world. For every plate of food we send, we're narrowing the chances of this place becoming successful. And I think you bully them into making sure that they get brainwashed to how you think. Well, let me tell you something. What you think is wrong. It's tough to get poked at all day. I feel like poking back right now. I'm trying to get through to you. So I can't get through to you. I've got no chance. I think you're treating this like a game. How dare you accuse me of not having a commitment? Dare you? I don't dare you. I'm telling you. You're not telling me anything. You, this is your own figment of your imagination that I don't have a commitment to this place. Dean's a fighter. He's not going to back down from a challenge. You just give me two minutes, you guys. Would you mind? You float on the customers coming round, blowing smoke up your ass. That's right, I do. When I ask people how their food is and they tell me it's good, it makes me feel good. I don't rovel around my customers kissing. How was it? 
Please tell me. You don't go to the table and ask people how their meal was? Or no, you, you probably pay 10 people no, to go to the no, table. No, I listen to the phone every morning to see how fucking yeah. fully booked I am. This is what to I get stand. paid to do. To stand in here. That's what, what I get paid to do, to, to stand, stand here next to people and give them a good fucking experience. And That's what I get paid and for. watch this shit come out. No. That's and your don't opinion. feel good about it. No, I don't feel good there about it. There you go again. That's my opinion. I don't opinion. feel good about it. You fucking do. That's what I gotta do. That's what I do. You're a fake. Fuck you. You're a fake. You're a fucking fake. Is that how you're gonna act? Walk away? You're not face it like a fucking man? It's what I gotta do. That's what I do. You're a fake. Well, fuck you. You're a fake. You're a fucking fake. Uh, you're full of shit. Is that how you're gonna act? Walk away? Can you not face it like a fucking man? I face everything like a man. I don't you shy do. away from nothing. That's right. Nothing. Nothing. Not you. Nothing. I have a commitment to this place that you'll probably never have to any place in your life, ever. What? Did I stutter? I just told you how I feel about this place. I'm not gonna suck your dick to make you believe me. If you don't believe me, you don't believe me. You don't like the truth, Dean. No, no I do like the truth. truth. No one's burst your truth. fucking I hear, bubble. I hear the truth of my life more than you'll ever hear the truth Bullshit. of my life. Bullshit. Yeah, that's what you think. You take pride in your hair, your trousers, your shirt, your, you, you're well groomed. I just want you to take pride in what the fuck you do in a business. And if you applied what you applied in yourself each and every day, you won't be serving that shit. Right now, we've got some issues in here. And unless you're prepared to change, this place has got no chance. And you've had it all your own fucking way for such a long time. And it's not going to continue being like that. One thing that has to change instantly, you. Ironically, it's Dean's fear of failure that is preventing him from making the necessary changes for success. But before Gordon can put his plan for change into action, he decides to explore the local competition. Italian, Chinese restaurant, next door to Pizzeria, an American bistro. How weird, another Italian. Restaurants everywhere. Another Italian, my God. How are you? Very good. Good to see you. You too. And what a beautiful little shop. Thank you very much. Busy little place? Very busy. Fantastic. So the great meat eaters here? Yes, they are. They yeah. love their steaks, and they like them thick. Been up and down the street, there's not one steakhouse anywhere. No, there isn't. Why has no one ever opened one here? Ah, uh, I don't know. But if there was a steakhouse locally, you could supply it? It would be a pleasant change. Well, listen, thank you. OK, Good sorry. to see you. Have a good weekend. OK. Chef, thank you, Paul. Chef, thank you again. Take care. OK, sir. Nice. Now armed with local knowledge, Gordon knows that to turn this restaurant around, he must get the chef back on track. Michael, this restaurant needs to be known for something. First big change, prime rib. Prime rib. On the bone. OK. This is a special to get this place in the right direction, okay. to make your life easier and to make service quicker. I am very nervous. It's not every day that you get to cook with a world-class chef. But you know how to slice it from there, don't you? Down and all up. Yeah, exactly. Go ahead and put that beef in, yeah? I'm excited to learn those new dishes. And then after time, just put my own spin on them and hope he doesn't come back and throw me under the bus. The idea behind the chopped salad is having that little bit of crunch there, yeah? Romaine, shredded, a few chives, a little bit of bacon in there. Half-dressed so it stays nice and crunchy. A little seasoning on the avocado, your tomato, chopped egg, a few chives. <laughs> Whee! Meltdown. OK. <laughs> yes? Oh, just think of the complaints. What? You're not stuffing my salad in a funnel? What do you mean you're not serving me a funnel salad? Mike, you all right with this? I'm you're fine working. with that. I laughed my ass off. When he burned those funnels with the creme brulee torch, I laughed. And, and I understood his point. There's nothing wrong with a simple salad. Don't try and make it anything that it's not. If they come and ask me for their salad to be stuck inside a funnel, I will personally lift them and put them next door in the retirement home. <laughs> OK? <laughs> Last of the fucking funnel. With the chef re-energized, Gordon turns his attention to the owner and his team. Dean has always had the desire to succeed. Now Chef Ramsay is about to tell him how to do it. OK, I've done my homework. I've been out and about, and I fucking, I, I've studied hard. What isn't in the town? There's not one good steakhouse anywhere in this town. 
This place has got every chance of becoming a phenomenal steakhouse. Chef Gordon's idea of a steakhouse would really work here. He's 100% right that there is nothing else in the area. Give the locals what they want and get them come in time and time again and make money. I'm listening to Gordon. I'm listening to everything he said. And he's making all these changes. But when the changes are done, I don't know if he's going to get people through the door. This place oozes steakhouse. I cannot tell you. Look forward to it. How did you sit? I can't afford to make many changes because I can't afford to alienate or lose what I have right now. I'm fuming. So you give me a little bit of manhood. I'm not insane. I had a vision. You cooked a simple prime rib? That was your resurrection of the place, was a simple prime rib? Hey, I'm sorry, I've got sorry. 12 successful rations, highly profitable, and you, my man, missed out on a fucking trick. When you change concepts, when you change direction so radically, I think that's a sign of weakness. Tomorrow, we're changing the menu. We're going to relaunch the restaurant. You've got some serious thinking to do. Good night. It's day four, relaunch day, and time for Dean to embrace the changes that will hopefully save his restaurant. Gordon secretly has brought in his design team who worked through the night to spruce up the Old Stone Mill. You know when I first arrived here, yeah? I drove by this beautiful building without actually realizing it was a restaurant. No sign. No. Nothing. Let's have a look, yes? Yeah, man. One, two, three, up. Look at it. Oh, Beautiful. A natural stone, the old stone mill Look steakhouse. Now we know what the place is when we drive by. When they unveiled the sign, it was just absolutely beautiful. I was breathtaking. Dean, do you like it? I love it. Huh? It's great. Very nice. Look next to it. Yeah. Steakhouse. Yeah. Why didn't I do it? Call the sign guy, work out a barter with him, do a trade, do something, and get the sign. I could have. I don't know why. Right, let's go inside. There's more. History. This is all the stuff that's been upstairs that you've been kept away. So when customers aren't waiting, you know, they can get a, an insight to what you've done. I want people to know from the first minute they walk in here that your heart is in here. I was a little intimidated when I first walked in because I didn't know what to expect. Every nook, every bloody piece of stone, look, the history's there. Gordon putting up these pictures of me building the place blew me away. OK, there's more. Come through. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Oh, my God. Wow, now everybody can see everybody. Oh, so it's lovely. Sweet. It's just beautiful. I can't even put it into words. It's open. It's classic. We've got new plates, new linen, new tableware. Barbara, what do you think? Gorgeous. I got rid of the dark colors. Too depressing. Yes. Too depressing. The candles on all the tables, the fresh flowers. It's just bright. It's cheery. It's a place you want to be. I'm speechless. Uh. <laughs> I'm speechless. The same restaurant, the same people, but something is different. We have Gordon Ramsay's touch. Mm, smell. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Let's see if it works. It has to work. It's there now. There's no fucking excuse. We've got rid of the clutter. Look at it. Looks great. Huh? Looks great. I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know any of this involved any kind of a makeover of any sort. But um, I'm man enough to admit that it's great. Even though the improvements to the decor are well received, that was an easy change to accept. Now for the hard one, the new steakhouse menu. OK, let's, uh, let's go through the food very, very quickly, yes? Menu. Let's start off with the um, meats. That's the porterhouse steak for two. You've got the most amazing ribeye. Next to that, you've got the New York strip, the most popular steak across America. I expected a blend of the old and new, but changing the menu completely surprised me the most. Halibut has a really nice sort of rustic, meaty flavor. You know, it's a very robust fish, but pan seared is beautiful. And then the crispy skin salmon, spaghetti of squash, confit shallot, and a really nice crispy skin, yes? OK, the appetizers. Um, steamed mussels, nice big bowl, and then the cream corn. Every steakhouse across the States has got cream corn on there. And then my favorite, the Old Stone Mill chopped salad. Sadly, no funnel. 
It's going to be a challenge, but uh, it's very exciting to have a new menu. With two hours to go before the doors open, Gordon wants to make sure the restaurant feels like the steakhouse in town. And before anyone eats any food, it will be up to the front of the house staff. This is now a steakhouse. We're going to confirm it. Each and every table that arrives this evening, a quick presentation. Bingo. Tom, sell it to me. My worries are that the food's changed, the aesthetics have changed, but I still have my dysfunctional staff. Hello. Welcome to the Old Stone Mill Steakhouse. Here are the steaks we have this evening. This is our... our 21-day aged... <sighs> Let's go. We have a... I'm completely out of my comfort zone. You can't expect to win the gold medal in a week. And on the top, a Kobe strip. Oh, come on now. A Kobe strip. <laughs> Sounds like a fucking Japanese lap dancing bar. <laughs> It's still the same mediocre crew in there. God almighty! Gordon has introduced a lot of changes to the Old Stone Mill in just a few days. And with their heads still reeling, it's time for Dean and his staff to rise to the occasion. Hello, how are you? We're excited about tonight. We're hoping this goes over well for us. Can I take your coat? What do you think about the new look? It's a new start. I'm exhausted. I'm emaciated. I'm tired. I'm anxious. Are you nice tonight? Yeah. I'm sure hope so. I was a little nervous going into it, not knowing a menu at all, only seeing it maybe at, at two hours before we were supposed to start. Not being ready is always a fear. OK, this is the big night. We put a plan together, and now they have to seriously execute it. Kobe beef medium rare. I, 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 I'm stuck. I want to know where all the menus are. If people drop the ball tonight, you won't see them here tomorrow. Tonight is the night of the big relaunch. Gordon Ramsay's plan for a steakhouse to fill the void in this town has generated some buzz. Is that the mayor? And the restaurant is fully booked. Now it's up to Dean and his staff to start building a new reputation for the Old Stone Mill. Everybody is on their tippy toes. The mayor, now where does the big shot go? Tonight will certainly be an indication of the probability of success for this place. Hey, hello. Hi. Mr. Mayor. It's a Long time no see. <laughs> I, I was a little intimidated when he first walked in because he's important to me to be here. Take your coat. Oh, thanks. When this place is full and the mayor's here, if you're not ready, well, I don't care how good you are. Come on. It's not going to work. With the customers and special guests taking their seats, the servers are busy making their rounds with the new menu. Have the Kobe. The Kobe beef. Medium well. And it's obvious the pressure of the relaunch is already getting to Tom. New York Strip. No, I'm sorry, the New York Strip, the ribeye, and our Kobe beef special. <laughs> OK. It was crazy. I mean, this whole situation is crazy. And the whole night, obviously, from the beginning, was going to be crazy. Woo! Get some napkins. Done. I'm fucking done. Tom. I'm not comfortable with the changes so quick when I don't know if we're ready for it. Yeah, Too much brother. for me right now. I just need. We I'm need sorry. you. Sorry, I'll be fine. We, I really will. We fucking need you. While Tom tries to pull himself together. Oh, you dry your eyes. I, I come back as the fucking manager, Tom. Okay. Okay. The first wave of orders hits the kitchen. Okay, Michael. Watch your temperature, yeah. I don't want the steaks coming back. Okay. Yes, yeah, sure. Good. Eight. Party of eight, who's eight? Whatever eight, eight comes in. There was plenty of pressure. A couple of times I lost my composure. Let's go. Let's go. Jeannie, the customer, not cattle. And when Tom does return, he begins to feel the heat once again. What's that smell? It's hot as hell in here, isn't it? Yes. Who's that? It's hot in that kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm concerned about Tom. He's sweating like a pig. Gordon, I don't know what to say. I'll drive if you had too much. Don't you worry. Come here. i got to call you quick now. Right, you're running around like a fucking blue ass fly. Yeah? You're fucking sweating like a pig. Get in the bathroom and do something about it. When Tom came back, you could see he was just totally disordered. Like, disranged. He, you know, he was nervous. He was nervous. 
God, it stinks. It's 45 minutes into dinner service, and though all appears to be going well, melts like butter, tastes delicious. Only a few customers have been served, and the mayor is not one of them. They've got a meltdown down there, and the uh, mayor, yeah, we can't keep him waiting. Yeah, yeah. Does Michael know that that's the mayor's table? What table number is that? Uh, that's 12. Yeah. Just make sure he knows. Do you understand? I need the mayor's table, man. I'm not getting tickets through this printer right now. Why? I don't know. This printer right here is not working? I am not getting tickets through this computer. It's going to fuck me up. No, the printer's working. Oh, boy. It was a disaster. I've already spoken to Dean about that. And then I finally screamed, cursed, and yells, get someone in here to fix this now, or we're fucked. I can't believe that no one's coming in here to fix this fucking computer. But if nobody wants to hear it, nobody wants to hear it. How about those steaks? <laughs> How about those steaks? He's fucking standing there with his finger up his ass. I don't know if Dean understands. It'll sink the whole night. And you'll be done. Oh, God. Now we're seriously in the shit. All the orders are backed up, tables are waiting, Tom switched off, and more importantly, we've kept the mayor waiting 45 minutes. Of all the people to keep waiting, not the fucking mayor. Christ. Now more than an hour and 15 minutes into service, and hungry customers are getting restless. So Okay, Michael, what I need is the fucking mayor now. Someone has to fix this computer, because I'm not getting tickets. Unbelievable. Get me fucking Dean, yeah? Please, straight away, yes? Dean, we have to go in the kitchen. I need the mayor's table, man. I don't know. It's a fucking hour. It's not easy getting kicked in the nuts every day and being told that you suck. I'm fucking embarrassed, man. Where? I told you this. I don't have tickets for this. Why aren't I getting tickets for this? Please help me. I don't Rip have medium the rail. ticket is what I'm saying. But it fucking is. This is the copy. You got to have the other hand. This is not my ticket. This comes from the salad printer. It's been an hour, and I got nothing. Read the fucking ticket. Oh, fucking hell. Here we go. What the fuck? Read the ticket. It's the last fucking table. I need the mayor's table, man. This is not my ticket. This comes from the salad printer. It's been an hour, and I got nothing. Read the fucking ticket! Oh, fucking hell, here we go. What the fuck? Read the ticket! It's the last fucking table! Prime oh, for the love of fucking Christ. Jeannie, two seconds. Yeah, don't worry about the fucking coffee. Mike. Mike, just come around for two seconds, please, yes? With dinner service on the brink of disaster, Gordon lays it on the line for Dean and his staff. Let's regroup a little bit, yeah? Let me just tell you the situation. Service is gone. We're all over the place. Let's get this thing back online. We've got to make decisions, especially at this critical moment. All right. This is where I need you now to fight back. This is going to make or break this place. I was really, really pissed off. But right now, for the sake of the success here, I have to just get through it. Let's get some appetizers. I'll pump those out real fast, and then we'll get you in there for your entrance. You know what? I will be right back, and I will wrap those up for you. You know, at this point now, let's work together. Let's correct it. Let's try to correct it. Sorry for the delay. Give me a steak knife, please. The printer's working. Good deal. That's good, Nana. Good deal. Two medium rare. Two medium. <laughs> Give me that, it's 34. Well, bon appetit. I certainly hope it was worth the wait. Excellent. And thankfully, Dean gets everyone focused. There you go. Thank you. And the night at least finishes successfully. The next day, Gordon wants to make sure that Dean's fear of failure would no longer stand in the way of his potential success. What really pisses you off the most? What is it? I know this place is, could be a raving success, and I'm not being blind, and I'm not in the fucking dream world. The fascinating thing about you, Dean, is that you're, you're scared of failure. Walk a mile in my shoes, and then we'll talk.
I've failed before in business. When? When I opened a restaurant up in my hometown thinking I was the dog's bollocks. And it made me the person I am today, having both success and failure. Don't be scared. You can't keep on sidestepping problems. But I really believe that he's doing it for my career now. I really believe him. Perhaps deep down I knew that I needed to change and I can't overlook things anymore. You can't tiptoe over it. This is your business. You're right. I got to implement changes to make this work this time. I can't wait any longer. With a fresh, new, open-minded attitude, Dean masterfully took control of the front of the house there we go. and the back of the house. That prime rib looks to die for right there. This is the steak for real steak eaters. Tom started to gain the confidence he needs in his role as manager. Did they get you drinks yet? You yeah. Yeah. Yes. You good? Yeah. Thank you. Okay. And Michael has rekindled his passion for cooking. Showtime, ladies. And to honor the Old Stone Mill's 200th birthday, Gordon organized a celebration party for the community. And for you, we'd like you to hang this also, the wow. key to the city wow. of Yonkers. Wow. Getting the key to the city blew me away. I'm excited for my husband because I see the smile back in his face. It's a push. <laughs> the local news even took notice, putting the restaurant back in the spotlight. Come and enjoy a steak at the Old Stone Mill. And the new steakhouse menu was just what this community needed and wanted. This is very nice. It's fantastic. It was excellent. Finally, the food is now as stunning as the building that it's cooked in. The most important thing is the confirmation that it can work. The potential is staggering. Now that you know what to do, don't stop doing it. Thank you. Sir. Thank you very much. Yeah, Thank, you, sure. sure. Thank you, my darling. Yes. Pleasure. Thank you. In my heart, we're going to make it. We have to make it. Up high, down below, you're too slow. Now get to bed. <laughs> Gordon Ramsay, he's such a blessing to our family that we could never ever thank him enough for all that he's done for us. I arrived, I found the place, finally. I thought it was beautiful. Now, I think you got something fucking phenomenal on. Now I have something to really be proud of. Thanks. Uh, thank you. Good luck. Thanks, man. I'm excited. I'm excited about what the future holds here. Yeah, do me a favor. Snip outside and have a quick look at the front of the restaurant. Oh, shit. <laughs> How do they do it? Where is it shooting from? Wow. I've wanted to sign up there for forever. I'm just overwhelmed tonight. That is so cool. Tonight on Kitchen Nightmares, Gordon goes to Los Angeles and discovers a pizzeria on its last leg. See, in movie terms, you've gone straight to DVD. Gordon has one week to take this restaurant from two thumbs down. Here we go, Q, action drama. To a box office smash. But with a boss who's in La La Land. My pizzas will be in supermarkets. What? Sebastian's all over the world. Oh, my God. And a spaced out menu. We have a concept. What we have is 20 different combinations. This may be his toughest challenge yet. That guy needs therapy. I'm a damn good cook. And when the owner flips out. Life, life. We're done. Get the team out of here. And breaks all the rules. He just changed like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Gordon gives him a cold review. But I've never, ever, ever, ever met someone I believe in as little as you. Tonight on Kitchen Nightmares. Burbank, California. Home to major Hollywood studios whose employees enjoy dining and making deals at the local restaurants. But there's one restaurant that is not benefiting from this location, and it's in financial hell. It's a neighborhood pizzeria called Sebastian's, named after its owner, who is also a part-time actor, and who's about to receive much-needed help from Gordon Ramsay. How's everything going? I've owned the restaurant for a little over two years. I can cook anything. Hi, that's a sandwich. And my mother's been teaching me since I could walk, so I guess that's my formal training. 
My ability is endless. Put it in front of me and I'll make the dish for you. I'll eat it myself. I think I'm very polite to my staff. This is unbelievable. Treat them great. Lou! Very understanding, I think. This is filthy. This is ridiculous. When he's get upset, you might see pans flying across the kitchen. Better duck. That's all I have to say. I ask him to do one damn thing. One thing. This is why we're losing money. Sebastian's, you know, he's kind of abrasive at times. Sometimes the things he says are like, what? Everything's a big joke to everybody, right? Big joke. They're not paying the bills. People are scared of Sebastian. This is ridiculous. I just don't deal with crap. I don't. You make something wrong, I've told you how to make it six times. I have no problem with firing you. I have no problem at all. I fired 49 people in the last year. So I'm trying as hard as I can. I'm still getting used to the, to the menu. It gets exhausting. <laughs> Explain the menu. I know. It's, it's overwhelming. I've created a unique menu that nobody else has. We have 23 gourmet um, flavor combinations. There's 21 gourmet flavor combinations. There's 20 gourmet flavor combinations. Wait. Pick a flavor combination, and then you add to beef, chicken, portobello mushroom, or steak. Shrimp. Wait, can I start over? So the meat is in the combination. If I saw it, I can do it. I mean, because. No, no, it's chicken. Let me start over. <laughs> Let me look at it real quick. <laughs> That's seriously the menu. The majority of the servers are actors. We all know it's really expensive to live in LA, and so we need to make money, but Sebastian doesn't do a good job at running Sebastian's. Something going over there? I'd say 90% of the time, we are losing money. Call him Daddy. Hey, Mama. Hey. My wife originally invested probably about $300,000. What's up, buddy? What's up, Mama? I'm very fortunate she does make good money. Uh, Is this yeah, a check? Yeah, I wish. We need checks. I basically control all of the cash. The investment gets to be resentful because it's so daunting. I did $490 today, all day. It's hard sometimes to look at my wife and let her know that I, I don't have the money. If things don't change here at Sebastian's... Hey, guys. I don't see us open longer than six more months. I really don't. It's 8 o'clock, and uh, there's nobody here. So, so we're going to go. Let's go. We're good. Right out of here. It would be very sad for this place to close because I love this place. Mm. Coming in day to day and trying to deal with that, it takes every bit of strength I have sometimes to really hold on. Live music, wood fire, breakfast, plasma TVs. Sebastian's finally found it. Um, it's here, right amongst all these studios and. On the front out there, very tacky. Oh my God. Sebastian? Yes. Yeah, Gordon, how are you? Yes, Chef Gordon, how are you, sir? Very well, thank you, sir. Pleasure to meet you. Hello, wife. Working here with Chef Gordon Ramsay, it's like, as an actor, having uh, Robert De Niro say, you know what, I'm going to help you with this role. Man. Let me take a seat. Please. And I'll go to this one here, actually. OK. Thank you. Do you all serve? Do I always serve? No, but I do greet and meet every customer that walks in the door. Jesus. Every single customer, whether I come over and just say hello, or I spend 10 minutes, sit down, and have a glass of wine with you. You sit down with the customers and drink wine? Why not? Oh, fuck me. Christ. There's uh, photographs on the menu. There's pictures. Are these real, these photographs? Yes, they are, sir. I took those myself. It looks ghastly. I've always had one simple room. Yes, sir. Whenever you come across a menu with photographs, get the fuck out of there. Our menu concept is very unusual and unique. I love the variety. Would you like a walkthrough of our main concept of the, of the menu? Concept? We have a concept, please. Over here is our main concept of the restaurant. What we have is 20 different combinations of marinades, toppings, and seasonings. What you do is you choose one, and then you add it to either chicken, portobello mushroom, New York strip, or shrimp. Angus ribeye, prime cut, that's cut for Sebastian's. You can have one of these combinations with an entree, with chips and gravy on the side, if you'd like, with one of our side salads. You can really see his face. He's sitting there explaining the menu, and Chef Gordon looks like his head's going to explode. <laughs> Available at any point in time, we have a half-pound Angus prime burger. I had actually 20 more. 
Are you serious? Yes, sir. God. I've never heard such a complex menu in my entire life. Probably not. OK. Um, OK, I'm going to start with some um, calamari. Calamari? Yes. Um, they're fresh? Yes, it is. Small portion of calamari. OK. Um, Chef Gordon questioned the, the quality of the calamari. Uh, my calamari is fresh. And then for um, my entree, I'd like to have a New York strip. OK. Can you make me a little uh, fresh pizza? What you type decide. of pizza would you, you like? You, you, you I'll decide. decide. Yeah? Perfect. Thank you. Lou, set me up a small dough, please. And what's your name? Sonia. Sonia. Good Hi. to see you. Nice to meet uh, you. What do you do? Um, I'm an actress. You're an actress? Yes, I am. Ah. Put her up! Do you play with Sebastian? Because he's an actor. Oh, no. Oh, OK. I haven't. And the calamari. Uh, are they fresh or are they frozen? They are frozen. Frozen. Good deal. He told me they're fresh. And they're not fresh, they're frozen. That confirms two things. Shit chef. And a dishonest one. Can I get you anything? No. A sick bag? Asked me for a sick bag, which I was, didn't know what to say, so I was like, okay. <laughs> oh, God. He said that he wanted a puke bag. Excellent. Fantastic. Yeah. I didn't know what to say, though. You don't have to say anything. Okay. You say yes, sir, and walk away. Okay. No problem. Okay. Sebastian, just, you could tell in his face that he wasn't very happy with the comment. I understand the guy's a professional, but to say something like that, a sick bag, come on. This is the house speciality? Um, yes. Yes, and what kind of pizza is it? What flavor? It's a Popeye pizza. Popeye? Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. Hello. Hey. Hey. So I got the chef here, Chef Gordon Ramsay. Oh, yeah? Yeah, he's in the dining room eating. Oh, really? Yeah. He, uh, he thinks my food is terrible. You think your food is terrible? Yep. The waitress asked, can I get you anything else? He said, yeah, a sick bag. Oh, sir. Yeah. I don't agree with his opinion. Throw him out. Ah, uh, throw them out. Yeah. Yeah. With two wood-burning ovens there, I thought at least they would be able to be in a position to do a, a stunning pizza, but the base is soggy. It's all watery. Surely to Christ they make a fresh piece of dough here. Sonia. I want you to plate it to him, and I want you to say, as Sebastian's mother would say, manja. Manja? Yeah. Sebastian's mother would say, manja. Oh my God. It's very difficult to manja without my yes, knife and fork. Of course, I'm sorry. I should have brought you a clean one. You've got the part. Thanks. Relax. Okay. It looks like a can of dog food. What an embarrassment to New York strip steak. Just chopped and cooked to hell. Everything's under seasoned. Enough canned pet food for today. Right now, yes. okay, in my mind, I'm hoping that you can act because you clearly can't cook. The food was shocking. The calamari weren't even fresh. Why do you need to lie to me on a professional front? Calamari? They're fresh? Yes, it is. They are frozen. Frozen. I'm not going to buy top calamari to mix in a seafood medley. We're not a four-star restaurant. Everything is cooked to order. Even our hamburgers that we just started making, we make fresh. Pizza dough? Pizza dough, no. That comes in flash frozen for us. I thought pizza was your speciality. I thought that's what this place was famed for. No, sir. Our, 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 men, our menu, that concept that baffles you, that's what we're famous for. That's why they're queuing up at the door and you're packing them in right now. Um, I don't know why my business isn't there. So you're telling me now that those 20 combinations yes, is sir. something that's blown your customers away? Unbelievably. Yeah, Everyone blown them the other end of the fucking world. I was basically kicked in the face. To me, that shows ignorance and a lack of respect. I, I truly have no respect for the man and his awards. It, they mean nothing to me at this point. OK, my pizzas soon will be in supermarkets. What? I would love to franchise this and have a Sebastian's all over the world. Oh, my God. Just think how that sounds, Sebastian's all over the world. That makes me excited. You haven't got fucking one right so far. How the fuck can you think about two? I need some fresh air. The guy's gone. 
<laughs> this guy is seriously off his fucking tree. I just won that one. I won that one. What on earth is going on in his fucked up delusional mind? Woo! Yeah. I won that one. I won that one. What he was giving me shit, and I gave it back to me, and it was like, uh, whatever. I was Sebastian? Yes. Yeah. Hello, chef. Um, I just want a little word. Listen, big boy, right now you've won jack fucking shit. You've got the audacity to stand there talking to me about a franchise when we can't even get our pizza right. It took everything in me not to just freak out. I've been here two years. It may not what have you got like to show? What have I got to show? Yeah, I'll tell you what I have to show. Tell me. Pride. Pride. You're feel... delusional. You that are... is your opinion, sir. A lot of people feel that way about you. What's successful about out there? I'm still here. That's what makes it successful. You just answered my question. I'll see you later. Yeah? Fuck oh, me. Woo! Fuck it, man. I think I won that one. Yes. Coming up, Gordon finds that when it comes to cooking... It's frozen. Frozen, frozen. Sebastian thinks inside the box. You're happy to be a fake chef, aren't you? And later, when Sebastian loses it... This is my fucking life! We're done! Get the camera out of here! Gordon tells it like it is. I've never, ever, ever, ever met someone I believe in as little as you. Coming up on Kitchen Nightmares. After a lunch that was not only disappointing but confusing, Gordon returns to observe a dinner service. What's up, beautiful? Hi. Good. Good to you? see you. I'm gonna come on and have a beer with you guys. Nice. Yes. We get a lot of directors, producers, you know, industry people coming in. Yeah. Yeah, man. Holy shit, I'm like, how do I know this guy? So the majority of the servers are actors, rappers, models. Well, take a phone, phone. Okay. I'm a model myself. I've gotten a couple gigs off working at Sebastian's. How you doing, brother? Good to see you. Sebastian's is the young who's who of Hollywood. But for these young actors, their biggest performance happens nightly when they have to sell Sebastian's overcomplicated menu. OK, let me explain the menu to you. It's a little bit different. There's 20 gourmet flavor combinations. You decide if you want chicken, portobello, mushroom, New York strip. It can take up to like 20 minutes because there's so many different combinations and so many different options you have on our menu. Then you decide if you would like it in a roll as a sandwich, on a bed of lettuce as a salad, or just as an entree. I can't even. Too much stuff. While the waitresses struggle with the menu, Gordon hopes to observe Sebastian leading the kitchen. But that is not the case. Q, I'm selling uh, table uh, 100. I got the Siciliano. Give me the shrimp Pittsburgh with the caprese salad. It's coming in 20 seconds. I love to cook. That's my passion. I love to cook, so it's crazy. But my strong point is when we busy. All of this. All of this, right? All of, all of this. It's frozen. And then you deep fry it. And that goes in a burger bun. Bloody hell. Is there anything that's ever cooked homemade? Oh, there we go. Very rare, Lou. Very rare. And what you put in there? This is just the potatoes. We just pipe them through. And you make fresh green potatoes. I believe it comes in flow frozen. Yeah, frozen. So what do you do to it? We just heat it up. You just heat it up. So it's not even powdered mash. It's already made in the factory and it comes in. Yeah. Processed mashed potato. Noticing the lack of fresh food, Gordon heads to the fridge to confirm his suspicions. And what he finds is a key reason as to why the restaurant is failing. Well, it's definitely processed. A fridge stocked with pre-packaged frozen food. Nothing's fresh made. This is all bought-in sources. Yes, sir. This one's a buy-in? Yes. Yes. Buy-in? Yes. I don't think we should be serving as much of the stuff that we do out of cans. I think that most of the stuff we serve out of cans, we could probably make that in-house. Where is your, uh, your bought-in dough? And to Gordon's amazement, even the pizza dough is frozen at this pizzeria. And you get them in frozen? Yes, it yeah. comes in frozen. I think it's one of the best frozen doughs I've seen. And uh, it's the only way we can right now to save a dollar. I got to be in there. With the presence of a world-class chef in the house, Sebastian decides it's time to take over in an attempt to impress Chef Ramsay. Vasily, Lou, pizza. Us three work here. Okay. Thank you very much. I got it, Lou. I can do it. I can do it. 
But I just moved Lou to another station where I thought she'd be uh, more useful at that point, and I could kind of just regain things. I have no idea why he asked me to come over here. Next speech you guys have, I want to make. I was really wanting to show Gordon that my ability is endless. There's nothing I can't cook. Put it in front of me, and I'll make it. That's gone now. That's fucking... That's history. But they taste better than they look. And to make matters worse, this pizzeria's most important cooking device is not the pizza ovens, but a microwave. Order up! Holy fuck. Now Sebastian's carelessness is affecting the customers. Oh. Ew. I had a salad go out and it had a hair in it. Is it yours? It's not my hair because it's oh, not dad. No, I don't want to see you eat it. <laughs> the waitress came over to me and told me that there was a hair in her salad. What would happen? I just took a piece of hair out of my mouth. I was eating the salad. A and piece of hair? It was going down my throat and they... My friend saw me pull it out of my mouth. I'm going to make you a fresh new salad in just a few moments. I don't think I want another salad. The salad's gone, and so is your pizza. Pizza's on us tonight. Thank you. You're welcome. Food that was comp, there was uh, $300 worth of food comp tonight. It, we got that one coming out. We fucked up this one. This one's on the house. <laughs> Shit, make some friends. Make some friends. Come on, pay attention. With dinner service coming to an end, Gordon has many concerns. Are you okay? <laughs> hey, I need somebody over here to get some of these plates going. Not the least of them being that the owner seems to be unconcerned. You'll come back tomorrow, I'll be sitting on the same couch, curled up with a bottle of vodka, just going, <laughs> talking to myself. How are you, chef? Fine, thank you. And you? I'm doing okay. Chilling out with your buddies? Uh, yes, I am. He didn't think that that was, uh, Professional. Did you need me, chef? I need two minutes with you on your own. OK. I'm going to get inside and uh, work. You guys going to hang out for a little bit? Yeah. I was kind of upset at Chef Gordon at that point. Um, I, I felt like he was being a little unreasonable. Let's just have a little taste together. What does that taste for you? It's not great. It's a little dry. It's cut the fucking end off, squeeze it into the container, and send it. A lot of stuff isn't homemade. 95% of the stuff is bought in. Uh, OK, I, I, I was going to go with 80%. This shit is the most disgusting fucking bought-in crap I've ever tasted in my entire life. It's almost more important for me to let this go out at half its quality and go out and make sure that the guests are happy and meet the guests and talk to them. You're happy? to be a fake chef on it. No, because I don't believe I'm a fake chef. It's a franchisable concept. Why are you so fucking obsessed with becoming famous with a franchise? Why, Why can't you just have a restaurant and cook your ass off and get customers in here for the love of what you're doing? I was hoping that this would be my launching pad for my name. How? That's not cooking. If you are convinced in your mind right. that what you're doing is going to work, you're beyond reach, you know that? Really? Fuck me. Up next, gone. The old menu is gone with the wind. Is a confusion. But a new menu. I don't see any uniqueness. Has Sebastian seeing red. And later. We're done. Get the camera out of here. He just changed like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Gordon gives Sebastian the painful truth. Never, ever, ever, ever met someone I believe in as little as you. Coming up on Kitchen Nightmares. In a town known for its movies, tonight's dinner service is a major flop. The nominees for the most confused restaurant in Hollywood is Sebastian's, Sebastian's, and Sebastian's. And your most famous words tonight was not any form of delegation, organizing insight. It's on me. Comp that one, I'll take care of that bill, serve that to there. You're running a business, not a freebie, drive by, pick up and go home. You shouldn't be saying that. 
at 10 to 9 in the middle of a bloody busy night. What do we comp in terms of dollars? Probably close to 300. 300 bucks? Yeah. Shit. I don't know what to say. Working with Gordon is going to be a challenge. I felt like he was being a little unreasonable. Here's the thing. What needs to happen here? Big change. We will have a new menu. Are you all right? It's day two, and after yesterday's eye-opening observations, it's time for Gordon to get through to this stubborn chef. With pre-packaged and frozen food turning customers off, Gordon gets the staff headed in a new direction to take advantage of the pizza ovens, which up until now have been used just for show and not for cooking. Sebastian's yes. Yes, needs to become known for one thing and one thing only, fresh pizzas. What are those two things there? Pizza ovens. This place can become so popular for homemade, fresh, wood-burning pizza. I'm not making the money. And it's quite expensive to really start using fresh dough again. Guys, come here. Have you, or you, or you, ever tossed a pizza dough? No. No. Not here. All of you, yeah, are now going to become great tossers. I've got two phenomenal expert tossers here now. Gentlemen, come in, please. Come and say hello. Gordon brought in a couple of guys to show us how to be pizza tossers and everything. It is just like going to Ben and Hunters and watching them chop your food and cook it right at the table. I think this looks wonderful in front of customers. If I was sat here with my family watching you do this... Now, yeah, I want you to become the perfect tosser. Lou, you have a go, yes? Q, let's go, guys. Uh, all of us, yeah? I'm up for a challenge and willing to try something new. Go, Lou. Only thing I hate about that whole thing is I have to get rid of my nails. But other than that, I love the fresh pizza dough. OK, guys, let's go. At this point in the game, one of two things has to happen. I have to accept what he says and go with it, or ask him to leave. Coming up, when the kitchen heats up, Sebastian starts to crack. Can Gordon rein him in? I'm stepping away from you because I don't want to be too close. You ungrateful. You have no idea. Nasty, You have no fucking idea. Joker. Fuck you. That's it, is it? Coming up on Kitchen Nightmares. It's day three. While Gordon took the day to get the staff focused on fresh food and using the brick pizza ovens, his design team worked overnight to transform the restaurant. Good morning, guys. Ladies, how are we? I'm excited to see the changes, such as my decor. Guys, ready? Yes. yes. OK, Yay. don't drop the baby. Yeah, Bessie. I'm going to take it. Go, 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 go. Go, go, go. Right. <laughs> First minute I walked in this space, it was ridiculous. It feels new and fresh, yes? Oh. <laughs> it's just overwhelming the way the place looks. Oh, oh, my God! Oh, my God! New chairs, wow. new couches, new linen. Little bar there to serve your cocktails from. This is great. This is so gorgeous. You start to see just a nice, vibrant, clean look. Wow, it looks new. Sebastian, the first time I've heard you lost the words. Yes, <laughs> you're speechless. Huh? It's absolutely beautiful. <laughs> Lou, happy? Very, yes. very, very, Good. Very. This is huge. It's bigger than big. I just cannot describe how happy and overwhelmed I am now. One more thing. Okay. We got rid of the frozen pizza dough. Because from this day on, you're now going to be making your own dough. That is the best of the best. It is an extraordinary piece of equipment. Lou, come over, my dunny. You wanted fresh dough in here, is that right? Rumor has it. Yeah. Now, you can make fresh dough to your heart's content. You know that? I was overwhelmed. I was looking at that mixer. It was phenomenal. 
Now you've really got your work cut out, my darling. You know that. <laughs> OK, good. This is the start, yeah, of Sebastian's turning around. There's no excuse anywhere, from decor to wood-burning oven to vibrant attitude from the staff. The real work starts tonight. There's no excuse. Although Sebastian craves success, he has been resistant to change. And now he's about to face his biggest fear. First thing we'll do is play to our strengths, OK? Kind of noticed that he was holding two menus, one being mine and one being the change that I think I was most afraid of. And uh, that really made me nervous. What I'm going to confirm now is that the confusion has gone. Gone, yeah, is a confusion. Gone is Sebastian's 20-ingredient mix-and-match flavor menu with pre-processed frozen food. It looks like a can of dog food. And in its place are made-to-order items using fresh and homemade ingredients. Just have a look. Let me read you through the menu first, OK? Pizzas, all cooked to order on our very own wood-burning oven, a margarita, a salami, a vegetarian, and then the entrees. Grilled New York steak and a wood-burning oven cooked chicken. There's nothing quite like this currently going on in this neighborhood. You have got an amazing chance to succeed here if you keep it simple. I like the new menu. It's simple, the fresh product and the fresh dough. That's a big thing for me. Take away the intimidation, Sebastian. Play to your strengths. Use what you've got. When Gordon showed us the new menu, I think it was a bit overwhelming for Sebastian's head. Are you upset there's no photos on there? There's uh, photographs on the menu. There's pictures of the food. I took those myself. No, no, the photos uh, isn't the thing that I'm concerned of. It's just, uh, it's, it's, it's the change I was scared of. Are you worried about the size of the menu? No, the size isn't the concern. It's, uh, I don't see any uniqueness. You're not going to now ask me to turn around and say what you gave me in terms of pizza was unique. I've created a unique menu that nobody else has. And Chef Gordon said, I quote him, I've never seen a menu like this before. So I'm assuming that it's quite unique to him also. Stop trying to be too clever. Don't try to be too smart. If you are you know, anxious about 20 combinations, it's 20 times confusing. I thought that there'd be more compromise with my menu. I didn't expect it to be just completely gone. I love that menu. You've tried for two and a half years, and it hasn't worked. That's the end of that chapter. With the Academy Awards falling on the same night as the relaunch, Gordon decides that this coincidence should be taken advantage of and is rolling out the red carpet for an Oscar night party. And Sebastian's is fully booked. We're going to kick ass, and everything's going to be a whole lot better tonight. I like to see this place rock. Tonight, expect a lot of chaos, but it should be fun. Here. I'm fighting right now, still inside, about that menu. It's driving me crazy right now in my head. Hey, we're serving, yeah. we're serving you know, 100 people in 20 minutes. With the kitchen hard at work with last-minute preparations, Sebastian is still brooding over Gordon's overhaul of his menu. I mean, it's a big joke to everybody, right? <laughs> this place is a mess. Nobody wants to clean. OK, right. Uh, Sebastian, where is he? Send everybody home and do the shit myself. Where's Sebastian? Brian's office. In his office. Lou! This place is a mess. And the waiters, they, they can't even clean. I got to come in and, and vacuum the rugs. What is that about? One minute he can be the happy-go-lucky Sebastian. And then who put this chair on the floor? This is what I'm talking about. And then we wonder why we're losing business. OK. It's Oscar night, and more importantly, relaunch night at Sebastian's. I'm very excited, and we're just going to have so much fun with the new everything. Wherever you want, grab a seat. I'm really excited to prove to Chef Gordon that we can actually do something right. And although there's excitement in the air, Sebastian is feeling one thing more than anything else. Where's Sebastian? Pressure. This is ridiculous. Sebastian. Excuse me, sir. OK, two seconds. 
um, control it, whether you're running the pizza side or whether you're on the grill. As those orders come in, push them out. Get on top of it and make sure that everyone is not shouting across each other. One person controlling it. Yes? OK. Any questions? No, sir. No? Good. Thank Good you. Let's go. Already, the restaurant is buzzing about the new menu. Okay. You're gonna try the shrimp, Nikki. You're gonna love. It. So far, everybody really likes the new menu. It's really nice. And the first wave of orders is now hitting the kitchen. I got two margaritas in. Okay. Good. Tonight, the pizzas are selling great. These shrimp Nikki's are going like crazy. Like crazy. And what the margarita, the sandwich, the slaw? Sell it. Sell it. An hour into service, and the new simplified menu is enabling the kitchen to run smoothly and the orders are getting out in good time. This has got ricotta cheese, mozzarella cheese, and spinach. So good, you guys. And keep in mind, all the dough is all homemade. Enjoy, I hope you like it. And Gordon's new made-to-order entrees are impressing the customers. The sauce is great. The shrimp tastes good. The night is going very well. A lot of people are enjoying the new food because they think it's really fresh. Much better. Much, much better. But instead of being happy, Sebastian is still disturbed over the menu change. That's bad. Hey, look at that, yeah? And think frozen mashed potatoes. Bollocks. No comparison. I want to try to go back to all of those 20 flavor combinations. There's a lot of uniqueness with the menu I was using. Whether he thought it was good food or bad food, it was unique. Sebastian still doesn't fully support Gordon's mandate for freshness. This is gone. This is gone. We gotta pull them tickets. And before the night is over, the microwave is back in action. Make me a primavera. Off the new menu or off the old menu? No, the old menu. All right? A primavera, an antipasti, and another Pittsburgh. OK, I need to know what Sebastian did here, because this is a mess. Unfortunately, Sebastian's reversion to his old menu has caused confusion in the kitchen. I need this for 35. Was that 35 what you just sent out right there? Yeah. No, this is table three, and this... No, I think the... That's the same. Erica, get her, get her, get her. I need that sandwich. I can have a chicken farm sandwich. I just got it. She's had it when got it. Okay. I can only tell you from a server standpoint, it was almost like a domino effect. Once one thing started happening, then another, then another. Hey, Sebastian, I can tell you right now we're going to need some help over here. So I can take table nine. No, because I have nine. OK, this is what I happened. It goes nine, though. No, yes, it's nine, ten. Nine, ten, eleven, something. Right. Okay, let's okay. go. Okay, so that's what I'm saying. Yeah. The scampi is gone for table nine. Wonderful. I handed it right there. We started using old menu, and there was so much confusion in the kitchen. So you're serving the old menu now? Yeah. I love the new menu, but I, the original concept of Sebastian's with the 20 flavor combinations, I'll never lose that. No fucking way we're serving the old menu, oh. pardon me. Looks like something for fucking dog's dinner. No fucking way. No, no, no. No, I just wanted to know what happened if I wasn't here. Are you serious? You think no, I... no, 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 I'm asking, yeah, I'm just asking. Don't start this, go fucking cold. Here we go, cue action drama, fuck me. Welcome, guys. I hope you enjoy your pizza. Oh, yeah. It appears as though Sebastian's ego is getting in the way of his potential success, and Gordon's had enough. Sebastian, I knew I'll end a word with you first. Right, my man. You can talk to me any way he wants, but when it comes down to it, I don't know what I'm doing. OK, when I first arrived here, we got off to a shaky start. Sure. Think oh, about yeah. it. Mm. Oh, yeah. And then we kept our heads down and we got through it together. Yes, we did. And we made some really exciting changes. The menu's changed. The staff have changed. Yes. Mate, there's one thing that hasn't changed in this establishment, and that's you, Sebastian. I'm 40 years of age, and I've gone to a lot of restaurants, but I've never, ever, ever, ever met someone I believe in as little as you. I think that you will go back to your sloppy, shortcut, five out of 10 frozen ways. 
Good luck. Unbelievable. Unfucking believable. Fucking useless. Are you fucking kidding me? Are you fucking kidding me right now? I haven't seen Sebastian this emotional. Sebastian just got to be real out. He just changed like Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. You fucking kidding me! That's pissed on his bonfire. Fucking arrogant fuck that motherfucker. We're done. Get the fucking camera out of here. Jeff Gordon! Jeff Gordon, where the fuck are you? Where are you? Oh, here. You come into my restaurant? Yes. I'm just so Why fucking you disappointed. Shout? You're going to calm okay? down? Stop or pointing your finger at me. You're gonna calm are we going to speak like men? You're going to speak to me like a man? You didn't listen to what I've just told you. You're not listening to what I'm saying. Did you just hear what I've just told you? I'm stepping away from you because I don't want to be too close. You ungrateful. You have no idea. Nasty, you have no I fucking idea. Joker. Oh, fuck, fuck you. That's it, is it? Yeah, it is it. I You're very disappointed. second fucking shit performance tonight. Are you fucking kidding me? Your whole act is a fucking joke. Anything else? Your whole act is a fucking joke. You're Anything a phony. Else? You shouldn't run like that. Run like what? Am I, am I supposed to be scared now, Sebastian? Come on, give me a break. I busted my ass in there. You tell me you I, what? I, are you kidding me? Let me Are you kidding you me? Let me just tell you something. You ain't telling me nothing. I'm so done. You I'm you get, done. You get your bit in. Yes. Loser. I'm telling you one last time. You're a fucking dickhead. Loser. I'm telling you one last time. You're a fucking dickhead. While Sebastian lets off steam outside, inside the kitchen has come to a halt. Gordon has put an enormous amount of effort into Sebastian's. He has also been impressed by the staff's willingness to change. They look lovely, don't they? Huh? Are they going out now? Wow. It's hard to hear that what you've done is a failure. Come on, guys. Salmon and chicken away, yeah? Roast the vegetables. Let's go. It's, uh, it's true, some of the stuff he says. Maybe I was a little twisted with my ideas and my goals. If you look at the numbers, then I guess it looks like I'm feeling. OK, ready? ready? Happy? Little slice of lemon. Knife, please. It's a slap of reality, and I know he's right. It's not easy to accept. But I guess before you grow, you got to accept it. Just keep them in there, get them nice and, yeah? It's my family, my, my kids. Makes you want to work harder. Let's go. What's next? Can you talk to me, big boy? Shrimp, yeah? Good. I don't have the degree. I didn't go to school. I know I've got talent. I'm a damn good cook. I'm not giving up. I'll get there. I'll get there. Speechless. I didn't, couldn't even tell you how worried I was because um, he's supposed to be this big bad guy, right? I could feel him watching me. I felt like he was said, "What are you gonna do about your kitchen? It's falling apart." I'm like, "You're right. I got, I got, I gotta fix this." How are we looking? Are we, are we back on top now? Oh, yes, we are, yeah. Stay on top, yeah. yeah, on yeah. Point, Not confused, no. No, sir. Good. What are we? Sebastian just came in and he was ready to go. Give me uh, a large crostini. I got you. Absolutely perfect. Perfect, perfect. Once things started going smoothly, Sebastian seemed to be a lot more optimistic. Get a little excited in here, Sebastian. I appreciate the enthusiasm. The fact I've got a one in a million opportunity here, I'd be a fool not to accept it. People eight, send it out. Let's go. Salmon's gone, yes. It's every level. Let's go. Put her up, put her up. I need us out on the fly. Double nine. With Sebastian back in the saddle, the staff rallies together and turns the kitchen around. Service has stepped up, food is going out on time, and most importantly, the customers are happy. Bloody well done. You took on the changes well, you all adapted, 
Change is a challenge. It's hard, but I think it'll be worth it in the long run. It's everything that we've worked for. Lou, your enthusiasm is infectious. You know that. Coming from Chef Gordon made me feel really good to know that, that he saw that in me. So that was cool. Andre, happy? Very. Yes? Yeah. Yeah, we started off slow, but hey, we didn't crumble, did we? We got more adjusted to the menu, and things started working a lot more smoothly for us. Tomorrow, it starts again. Yes? Well done. Yes. Up, up, up. Very good. I respected the chef when he came in. My opinion changed of him when I met him. And he's reiterated to me, I don't have to agree with his methods. The result is what it is. As I leave Sebastian's, I have a lot of mixed feelings. I really know this restaurant can be a big success, but I also feel Sebastian has very little interest in sticking to the new plan.